Hello, and welcome to another episode in our series on getting started with client libraries for the Google Ads API. I'm Mattia Tomasone, a developer relations engineer working on the Google Ads API, and today we will walk through the required steps to generate the OAuth credentials that you will need to authenticate your Google Ads API requests. First of all, here is a partial recap of how authentication works with the Google Ads API. The credentials involved in the OAuth flow are the access token, the client ID, the client secret, and the refresh token. The access token needs to be provided along with every authenticated request to the Google Ads API, but access tokens are short-lived. Our client libraries can generate access tokens as needed, but they need long-lived credentials to do so. These long-lived credentials are the client ID and the client secret, which identify your application, and the refresh token, which identifies a user of your application and corresponds to a user on a Google Ads account. Long-lived means that you need to generate a client ID and a client secret just once, which is what we will do in this video, and in general, generate a refresh token once for each end user of your application. We have a detailed video series on authentication and authorization if you want to dive deeper into the meaning of these credentials and some best practices for managing them. Keep in mind that there are a few slightly different OAuth flows that you can follow, depending on the nature of your application. The one we will follow today is the desktop application flow, and there is a different flow for web applications. We have instructions for the other OAuth flows as well on our dev site. I will leave you the link to these instructions in the video description below. So, here are the steps that we will take together today to create a client ID and a client secret. First of all, we will create a cloud project, then we will enable the Google Ads API for it. Then we will configure the OAuth consent screen, and then, finally, we will be able to generate the client ID and the client secret and download them on our computer. So let's get started then. The first step we need to take to create a client ID and a client secret is to create a Google Cloud project. To do so, we can access the Google Cloud console at cloud.google.com slash console. Then click on the project's dropdown and then on New Project. Note that you may already have an existing Google Cloud project. If so, you can skip this step and proceed directly to enable the Google Ads API for it. Then in the following form, we need to specify a name for our application, and I'm going to use Getting Started Ads API. Then we have to add a billing account, an organization, and a location for our project. These depend on how you or your organization are already using Google Cloud, so please edit them as you need, and then click on the Create button. Once we've done that, the actual project creation will take a few seconds, and when the project is ready, we will be able to click on Select Project, and the project name will be shown in the project dropdown that we used earlier. What we want to do now is to enable the Google Ads API for our project. To do so, we need to go to the APIs and Services section of our project, which we can access either from the home page or from the menu on the left, and then click on the Enable APIs and Services button at the top. This will take us to the API library where we can search for Ads to find the Google Ads API. We can click on it and then on the Enable button. Once we've done that, our project is enabled to use the Google Ads API. Please note that if you want to use this project's OAuth credentials with other Google APIs, such as the Content API for shopping, you will have to enable each of these as well. Now, there is still a missing piece before we can proceed to the actual OAuth credentials creation. We need to configure the OAuth consent screen. This is the screen that's displayed when your application asks users to grant access to their Google Ads account so it can manage their campaigns through the Google Ads API. To configure the OAuth consent screen, we need to click the Configure Consent Screen button, which will take us to the configuration wizard. First, we need to specify if our application is meant to be used by internal or external users of your Google Cloud organization. Unless you are developing an internal tool, for most cases you will want to set the user type here to external to make sure that all users can use your application and not just the ones that belong to your organization. In the following page, we have to specify the application name being displayed in the OAuth consent screen. Here I'm using Getting Started Ads API as the name and providing emails for user support and developer contact information. You can also specify values for the other fields in this page now, or you can do it later. 
Note, though, that some of these, such as the link to the privacy policy, will be required to make sure your application can be switched from testing mode to production mode. I will leave you a link on the details about the steps required to set your application's publishing status to production in the video description below. Once we've filled all the required fields and clicked the Save and Continue button, we need to configure the OAuth scopes that we want our users to be able to access. We want our users to be able to access Google Ads data, so we need to add the Ads scope to our application. To do so, we are going to click on the Add or Remove Scopes button and then search for Ads in the Filter field. This will show the Google Ads API scope. So we can select it and then click on Update to add the scope to our OAuth consent screen. This will make it so that users will be notified that they are allowing your application to access their Google Ads account when they are shown the OAuth consent screen. Note that Google Ads API is a sensitive scope, which means that in most cases your application will need to be verified by Google when you set the publishing status to production. There are some exceptions to this, such as internal applications, which can be accessed only by users in your Google workspace or in your cloud identity organization. I will leave you a link to the details about these exceptions in the usual place, the video description below. So now I can click Save and Continue, and in the final step of this wizard, I can add some test users for my application if I want to try out my authorization flow before my application is published. I'm not doing this now, so I can just click Save and Continue again, and my OAuth consent screen is now configured. However, by default, my application is in testing mode, which means that it's still accessible only by test users and that its authorizations will expire after seven days. To make sure it can be accessed by external users and that it can maintain access longer than seven days after it was granted, I need to publish my app to production by clicking the Publish App button. As I mentioned, since my application uses the Google Ads API scope, which is a sensitive scope, it will need to undergo verification from Google, which will make sure my application is legitimate. To complete verification, I will have to provide the information displayed here in my OAuth consent screen configuration section. However, I'm going to save this for later, so I'll just click the Confirm button for now. If I want to provide all the data required for application verification later, I can just click on the Prepare for Verification button here. Now, we are finally ready to create the OAuth credentials that we will use in the next videos. We can go to the Credentials section and click the Create Credentials button, and then select OAuth Client ID. As I mentioned earlier, we are going to use the desktop application flow, so we select Desktop App from the Application Type dropdown, and then we click Create. My OAuth Client ID and Client Secret have now been created, and I can note them and store them in a safe place. Note that. These are to be kept with the same level of security that you would use for an application password, so they should not be shared with anyone else. You can download these credentials in a JSON file, and they are always available from the credentials page of the APIs and Services section of your cloud project. So now that we have our client ID and our client secret, we can move on to the next step, creating refresh tokens, which will allow your application to manage your users' campaigns through the Google Ads API. You can learn about that in our next video. I'll see you there.